Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is lesson video for um, 4.3. We're going to be talking a little bit more about trigonometry uh, in this lesson. We're going to begin by discussing coterminal angles and then a little intro on the unit circle. So, all sorts of fun here. Um, okay, a couple definitions. There's three definitions to start with. I want to look at the first two, initial side and terminal side first, just to kind of get you to understand what this stuff is. Very simple. Um, if you draw an angle, the first ray that you draw is what you would call the initial side. And then the second ray that you draw is called the terminal side. All right, so it should make sense. Initial, beginning one, the first one, terminal, the end, the last one, the final position. All right, and then in between, obviously, is our angle theta. All right, so standard position now. Um, angles are placed in standard position in the Cartesian plane when the vertex angle is at the origin and its initial side lies on the x-axis. It lies on the positive x-axis, actually. So here we have the initial angle. I'm sorry, the initial side on the positive x-axis. Uh, we have the terminal side here. And then the vertex angle, notice how it's right here at the origin. And then um, obviously uh, the angle in between, we'd say we can measure, you know, it's theta. And this is, again, standard position. So standard position, the initial side's on the positive x-axis. The vertex angle is at the origin. Now, there's two types of angles, positive and negative. If we rotate the terminal angle in a counterclockwise direction, that's positive. And then if we rotate the terminal, uh, the terminal side, if we go counterclockwise, we have a negative angle. Coterminal angles, two angles that have the same initial side and the same terminal side, yet have different measures. So let's look here at this angle. It is a 60 degree angle. Here's the initial side. Here's the terminal side. Now, if I rotate, if I start at the initial side and rotate the terminal side instead of um, counterclockwise, I go clockwise. If I rotate it all the way back where it... Um, shares the same terminal side as the 60 degree angle. All right. Notice that a negative 300 degree angle is formed. That's form that I come up, you know, they get negative 300, 360 minus 60, all right? Since I went uh clockwise, it's negative. All right. So the negative 360 degree angle and the 60 degree angle share the initial side and they share the terminal side, so they are co-terminal. Um, now, I want you to add this in your notes. Angles are co-terminal if they differ by an integer multiple of 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So what we can do now is basically add 360 to these angles to get additional co-terminal angles. So 360 plus 60 that I have here is going to give me 420. Uh, 420 plus 360, that's going to give you 780, and you can continue uh, to get as many kind of coterminal angles as you want. All right, if I wanted to kind of draw this in, um, if you wanted to draw a 780 degree angle, all right, so you would start at the initial side. And so you would go, you'd say, okay, oops, you'd say, okay, one time around here is 360, two times around here is another three, 360, so 360 and 360 is 720, and then you go another 60 to put you at uh, 780 degrees. So that little diagram right there is how you would represent a 780 degree angle. Okay, we want to find and draw uh, positive and negative angles that are coterminal with the given angle. 
So in A here, the given angle is 30 degrees. So very simply, to find the positive angle, coterminal angle, we're going to do 30 plus 360 degrees and get 390. We're going to draw that. All right. Um, so we're going to start at the initial side. The initial side. We're going to go around once. That's 360. Then add 30 to that. All right. And so that's going to be a 390 degree angle right there. Um, for the second part, we want the negative angle, negative coterminal angle. So we're going to do 30 minus 360. So that's going to give me negative 330 degrees. So in order to draw that, all right, I'm going to start at the initial side. And I'm going to, the screen's giving me issues. Sorry. All right, negative 330 degrees, start at the initial side. We're going to go around and around in a clockwise direction. That's a 30 degree angle, it looks like, right there. All right, and so we're going to say, all right, this is negative 330 degrees. All right. Okay, now let's do B, negative 150 degrees. So, oops. Negative 150 degrees. Um, so we're going to do negative 150 plus 360. And when we add those, when we add negative 150 to 360, we're going to get 210 degrees. All right, that's going to be the positive coterminal angle. And then for the negative co ah, my screen just flipped. Then for the negative uh, coterminal angle, we're going to do negative 150 and then we're going to subtract 360 degrees. All right, and then when we do that, what we're going to get ouch. Just stepped on my book bag. We are going to get where is my answer? Negative 510 degrees. All right. Uh, what I want to do is just graph the 210 degree one. You can do the negative 510 degree angle on your own if your heart desires. All right, the 210 degree here. Let's start at the um, initial side here. So from there to there, that is 180 degrees, right? And then go 30 more, about right there. All right, so that's going to be, so that angle right there, 210 degrees. Capiche? Capiche. All right, last one, we need 2 pi over 3 radians. Okay, we're going to have to erase this. Erase, not go back. Alright. So, let's see. Yes, 2 pi over 3. So, 2 pi over 3 radians. Alright, so we have to add, not 360 here, we're going to add 2 pi. So, 2 pi over 3, and we're going to add. 2 pi or 6 pi over 3. 6 pi over 3 is the same as 2 pi. I just want a common denominator of 3. So now we have 8 pi over over 3. That's the positive coterminal. And then the negative coterminal is going to be 2 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3. And that's going to equal negative 4 pi over 3. All right. And in this case, let's do, what do you want to graph? Let's graph the, um, let's graph negative 4 pi over 3. So let's convert that to degrees so we know what we're dealing with here. So negative 4 pi over 3, our conversion factor. We want degrees on top, pi on the bottom, so those cancel. And then, where's my calculadora? It's not under my computer. 
This stuff is everywhere right now. That underneath the book, it's right here on the side of my couch. Alright, so we do negative 4 times 180 divided by 3. So negative 240. So this equals negative negative 240 degrees. Alright, so negative means that I'm going clockwise. So from here to here, well that's 100 and 180. If I were to go another 90, that'd be 270. So, oops. I don't know. Somewhere right in there. We can say that is negative 4 pi over 3. Alright. Example 2, we change gears a little bit. Uh, we're going to evaluate trig functions determined by a point in quadrant 1. Let theta be an acute angle in standard position, whose terminal side contains the point 5, 3. Find the six trigonometric functions of theta. Alright, so we got a little sketch to do. What the heck is going on? So first things first is to plot the point five three. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Alright. Um the terminal side contains that point. So this is the terminal side there. The initial side is the positive x axis. Um its length is gonna be five. And then let's form our right triangle. This length is gonna be three. And then here is theta. The only thing missing is what our hypotenuse is, and we're going to get that using the Pythagorean theorem. So 5 squared plus 3 squared equals x squared. So 5 squared is 25, 3 squared is 9. So 34 equals x squared, x equals square root of 34. And that is the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's uh, calculate this, the trig functions now. So, get a little more room here. Sine of theta is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 3 over the square root of 34. Okay, don't leave your answer like that. Rationalize the denominator. Remember, we're multiplying by 1, but a different kind of 1. The square root of 34 over the square root of 34. So 3 squared of 34 over 34. Um, cosine of theta, that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's 5 over square root of 34. Again, rationalize the denominator. So I get 5 square root of 34 over 34. Um, tangent of theta. Um, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we get 3 over 5. That's nice because we don't have to rationalize. This is 3 over 5. Okay, so now we want to find the reciprocals of each of these. Uh, sine of theta, its reciprocal is cosecant. And that's just going to be the square root of 34 over 3. The reciprocal of cosine is secant of theta, and that's going to be square root of 34 over 5. And then the cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. That's going to be 5 over 3. And there's your six trig functions of theta here in this example. Example 3, we have a very similar problem to the last one. However, um, the terminal side contains the point negative 5, 3. Alright, so I drew that here. Um, now, what we're going to have to do is draw in a reference triangle. This is a definition that I want you to copy down. It's a triangle formed by the terminal side of angle theta. So, 
this right here is angle theta. Here's the terminal side that contains negative 5, 3. So the ref reference triangle contains the terminal side of, ang of angle theta, the x-axis, and the perpendicular dropped from a point on the terminal side to the x-axis. So the x-axis here, and then the perpendicular dropped here. All right, now the reference triangle gives us an angle of what we'll call theta prime. Theta prime. If I can write, come on, get the prime symbol. It's not letting me, there we go, well, that'll have to do. Theta prime. So if, what we're going to do is if we find the uh, trig functions of theta prime, those will be the same um, trig functions of theta. All right, so let's do this. All right, so theta prime and theta are the same, so I just wrote theta here. So, um, okay, so find the sine of theta. So sine of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So 3 over the square root of 34. All right, so you're going to get very similar answers. Well, the similar answer here for sine of theta. This is going to be 3 square root of 34 over 34. Now the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse and so this one's going to be a little different. It's negative, um, negative 5 over the square root of 34. So multiply top and rationalize the denominator. Multiply by square root of 34 over square root of 34. So I'm going to get negative 5 square root of 34 over 34. Tangent of theta, uh, opposite over adjacent, so negative 3 fifths. And then the reciprocals. This reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so that's going to be square root of 34 over 3. Cosecant is going to be negative square root of 34 over 5. Cotangent is going to be negative 5 over 3. All right. Now, what I want you to notice is that the sine of theta and the cosecant of theta are both positive. They're the only ones that are positive. All right, and so I'm going to show you uh, a way to uh, remember which trig functions are positive in which quadrants by this little graph here. This ASTC, which is going to stand for all or you, students take calculus. The A means that all trig functions are positive in quadrant 1. In quadrant 2, only the sine and the cosecant are positive. So that is why these are the only positive um, answers here. Tangent and cotangent are positive in quadrant 3, and cosine and secant are positive um, in quadrant 4. Alright, here, uh, definitions of trig functions of any angle. Alright, so you can kind of look and, and read through this. Basically, what all this is, is um, instead of the hypotenuse, it's giving you it as written as R. So, hypotenuse is the same thing as R. And then, um, you know, the Y and the X that you see here is just the... Uh, the x coordinate and then the y coordinate. So nothing really new there, just a new way to notate. Example four, evaluating the trig functions of 315 degrees. Uh, so we want to find the six trig functions of 315 degrees. So what is a three? Where's the 315 degree angle? So from here to here is 180. 270, and this right here right, is going to be our 315 degree angle. Alright, so what we're going to have to do is draw our reference triangle to help us find 
um, the trig functions of 315 degrees. So we're going to drop our perpendicular to the x-axis. Right, and then we want to find what uh, what this angle is right here. So in order to do that, we're going to do 360 minus 315. That's going to equal 45. So that's a 45 degree angle there. So I'm dealing with a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Alright, so let's get rid of some of this. Because I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to arbitrarily, no, not arbitrarily, this is a 45, 45, 90. So I know that um, my legs are 1, and then my hypotenuse, get rid of this. So my hypotenuse is the square root of 2. All right, so the um, so this reference that this forty-five degree reference angle is going to be the same thing as um, the sine of three hundred and fifteen degrees. So the sine of three hundred and fifteen degrees, again, it's the same as what we're going to calculate the trig functions as if this was forty-five degrees. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over the square root of 2. Rationalize the denominator, so that's the square root of 2 over 2. Uh, the cosine of 315 degrees, that's going to be, well actually, um, let's see here. The sine, so this is 1, this should be negative 1 here. This should be negative 1, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so the, let me erase this. Alright, so the sine... 315 degrees, that's going to equal negative 1 opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 1 over the square root of 2, multiplied by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, so that's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 315 degrees, that's going to equal adjacent, which is 1, over the square root of 2. So, rationalize that denominator. That gives me the square root of 2 over 2. All right, notice cosine is positive. That should make sense because uh, cosine is positive in quadrant 4. Tangent of 315 degrees. Uh, that's opposite over adjacent, so that's negative 1 over 1. So that's just negative 1. All right, and then um, cosecant of 315 that's going to equal uh, square root of 2, negative square root of 2. The um, secant of 315, that's going to equal the square root of 2. And then the cotangent of 315 degrees, that's going to be negative 1 as well. Alright, so those are the six trig functions of a uh, 315 degree angle. Again, notice that um, uh, this is in quadrant 4, so cosine and secant are the only ones that are going to be positive. Um, this is going to wrap up this video. It's going to be part one. Part two, uh, we'll cover the rest of the guided notes for this section.